Former Lurker here. Today we're going to learn how to use a DSLR camera with Octolapse. I'm going to assume that we're installing this on a Raspberry Pi running Octopi. If you're running another flavor of Linux, these instructions should still work pretty well. So let's start out by going to the Octolapse repository on GitHub. You can find that at this URL. And then we're going to want to quick click on the Wicca link here. Scroll down a bit you'll see a section called tutorials. You want to click on configuring an external camera and that'll take you on some step-by-step -step instructions. So let's start right at the beginning. The first step is to make sure we're running the newest version of Octoprint. It's currently 1.3.9. If you're running anything earlier than this you'll have to update to the latest version in order to get this all working. So you can find the version number of Octoprint by going to the page and look at the bottom left hand corner. You'll see the version right here. If it's lower than 1.3.9, you're going to want to update now. The next thing to do is to install the latest version of Octolapse. And as of this writing, that's 0.3.4 RC1 Dev3. Now you can find the link here, and I'm going to try to keep this updated. Uh, but if you want to be sure to get the latest version, you want to click on this code link in the top left. And then you'll find releases. And the very top one is going to be the latest release. Now we can get the latest link here under Assets, and it's this source code zip link. Just right click, copy link location, and then we can go back into Octoprint, go into Settings, the Plugin Manager, and click on Get More. Then we can paste that URL we copied right here in this From URL box and click Install. Now I already have this version installed. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that out. Now remember, after you install, you need to reboot Octoprint, and then you need to clear your browser's cache. In Windows, that's Control F5, and you'll see it refresh. Now if we don't clear the browser cache, we may have old JavaScript if you were already running a version of Octolapse, and that can be bad. Nobody wants that. So if you're not running Windows, you may want to look up how to clear cache in your browser and uh, and then everything should work fine. And You can verify your install by scrolling down to the bottom and you can see the new Octolapse version right here. Okay, now the next step is to install GPhoto 2 on our Raspberry Pi. Now I've already SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi and I'm going to run this command to install GPhoto 2. I'm just going to copy that and we'll go into PuTTY and in PuTTY I can copy into the terminal by just pressing the right mouse button. You'll see it filled that in. I'm going to hit enter to start installing. Now I've actually already installed GPhoto 2 so it's going to come back and say it's already up to the newest version. Uh, but this does take uh, quite a bit of time to install so you may want to pause it get that installed. If you have problems installing GPhoto 2, it might be a good idea to look at the official GPhoto 2 website and see if there's some troubleshooting tips. I have noticed that some users have said that this library needed to be installed first, so you may want to give this command a, a shot, run it, and then try running uh, this install command afterwards to see if that doesn't fix your problem. Now the next step is to make sure that GPhoto 2 can run uh, via root without actually having to enter a password in. And to do that, we're gonna we're gonna run this command. Paste that right in here. And you'll see it opens up a file that looks like this. Now, what we want to do is move our cursor to the bottom, and we want to copy one line out, two lines actually right here. And what this is saying is that the Pi user can run GPhoto2 as root with no password. Let's paste that in here. All right. Now we can save this by hitting control O. That'll output the file. And then control X to leave. And at this point we're going to reboot. You'll see that step right here. So I'm going to copy that in. You could also do this through the, the Octoprint page. 
All right. See it's disconnected. Now we'll wait for our Raspberry Pi to reboot. Okay, our Pi is rebooted. I've logged back in with SSH via PuTTY. And now we should be able to test our camera. So if you copy this command, this is going to run gphoto2 and try to auto detect our camera. Now make sure your camera is on, that it's plugged into the USB cable, and that the USB cable is plugged into your Raspberry Pi before you try this. So I'm going to copy this out, and we'll go back into PuTTY, and we'll run this command. Now if everything works great, you're going to see something like this. It's going to detect your model, and it's going to tell you what ports they're located at. Uh, if you have a problem, it may look more like this, where there's an empty list without any cameras. Again, if you have problems here, you want to look at the official GPhoto2 site and see if there's any troubleshooting uh, tips here that can help you. You also may want to look at this list of compatible cameras. Here you can find all the... Ooh, that link didn't work. But I can find it here in the GPhoto2 documentation right here under remote controllable cameras. Click more. If you scroll down you'll see all the supported cameras and there may be some notes so you may want to read that. Sometimes there's some additional settings that you need or some camera setup before GPhoto 2 will work. So look into that if you have problems. All right now we're going to actually try to capture an image. So I'm going to copy this command. And we'll paste that into PuTTY. And this should trigger our camera, so we should actually hear it take a snapshot here. And I hear it click. And then you can see that it's stored this image on the camera in that location. Um, feel free to check your camera to see if that showed up. Uh, it, it probably did. Now we're going to try one last test. We're going to capture the image and try to download it to the Raspberry Pi. So we'll go into PuTTY. You see that new flag. I hit enter, it'll snap, and we'll see it'll look a little bit different this time. See it downloads it, and then you can see that it's saved with this file name in the current directory. So if we type ls, we'll see that file right here. And I'm going to delete it to keep things pretty. There we go. Okay, so the final or not the final step, but one of the final steps is to create our snapshot script. In a future version of Octolapse, I want to include some default scripts and make them available. But for now, we're going to have to create our own, and it's a pretty simple process. So first, I'm going to store this script at this location. It makes sense because this is already available on the Octopi. So let's copy this command. And let's go into PuTTY paste it in. That'll just change our, our directory. We can look at it. There's some scripts in here. And then we want to create our script file. So we want to run this nano. This is going to open the nano editor until we want to create a file called takesnapshot.sh. So we'll paste that in. Now it's you can see it's open the editor and it's blank. And I actually have a sample script here that we can paste in. Uh, this script is going to down. It's going to first create the snapshot directory if it doesn't exist. Then it's going to download a new image into that directory with the right file name. And then it's going to double check to make sure that that directory actually or that 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 file actually exists. So let's copy the whole thing. Now it's important that you get the very first line here, so don't miss that. That's actually important. So I'm going to pick this file, copy it. I'm going to paste it in here with a single right click. You can see it's pasted everything in there. Now I'm going to save it by holding control down and pressing O and hitting enter. And then we can exit by holding control down and pressing X. <coughs> Excuse me. Now the next step is to add execute permissions. We need to be able to execute this script and we can do that with this command. hit enter, now it's executable. Now I've written a command here that we can actually use to test that script. So if we copy this out, you'll notice there's some parameters here. These are required for this script to run. So I'm going to go to PuTTY, paste it back in, 
and this is it should download a JPEG file called test in the current directory here. So we'll hit enter. You can hear the camera take a picture. It says it downloads and it exits. I can check by doing an ls. There's our test JPEG. So now we know where we have pretty good confidence that our script's working. So I'm going to remove that file. Keep things clean. Great. Now we have to configure Octolabs. So the first thing is to add a new camera profile for our DSLR. I want to leave my webcam since it seems to be working pretty well. To do that, we click on this wrench. Scroll down to Octolabs here. Click on Camera. And now we're going to add a new profile. I'm just going to call it DSLR. And here for camera type, this is an external camera that we're going to run with script. So we'll click on that. And now we actually have a new text box here, the snapshot acquire script. And this is just the full path to the script. If you look over here, you'll see if you've been following along, your script should be right here. You can copy that out. You can paste it right in the box. Uh, next, we want to turn our snapshot delay to zero. Most DLR, DSLRs don't require any delay because they're going to do their thing no matter what. And this snapshot timeout, this is how long Octolapse is going to give your script to, to execute. Now, since we're testing things, let's turn this up a little bit. And this is in milliseconds, so every thousand, that's one second. So this is five seconds. Let's just make it 15. Okay, so I'm going to save this now. And you'll see I have this DSLR profile and you'll see it down here too and you know you can disable or, or enable. I'm going to actually leave them both enabled for right now. Okay, let's go back to our tutorial. So the next step here is the test print. Uh, basically what we're going to do, we're going to set Octolapse into full diagnostic test mode and normally it's sitting here in, new lo in uh, no logging mode let's just turn that to full diagnostic test mode and what that's going to do it's going to log a whole bunch of stuff to your Octolapse log file which you can get here in settings logging plugin underscore Octolapse.log if you have any problems you're going to want to download this and you're going to want to post this file with your issue on GitHub so we'll leave that in the test mode part what that means is when I print it's going to strip all the extrusion commands so that you shouldn't extrude any plastic. It's going to prevent your uh, nozzle from heating up. It's going to prevent your bed from heating up. And it's going to strip some other commands like firmware retract and detract. And all this really does is it lets you test fast. You don't have to wait for your printer to heat up. You don't have to extrude any filament and waste any plastic. Uh, but I do recommend that you unload your filament now before we run our test print just to make sure that there's not a bug or something in this profile that that might you know, miss a command or so. It's pretty well tested, but better safe than sorry. All right, so we are on debug mode. Now I'm going to pick my file, and I'm going to print. And I heard a capture very quickly there. Um, part of the reason it's so quick is I'm actually using the virtual printer, so I'm not really printing to a real printer, so it's going to be a little faster. And um, you'll notice here, Right now it's taking pictures from the default webcam. That's the preview that's showing right here. But I want to switch it over to this DSLR and see what's happening. So I'll click here. Oh, you can see I'm taking a picture of Janeway there. Anyway, normally this would actually be aimed at your printer so you could see your time lapse working. But since this is just a test, I just aimed my camera anywhere that, that looked good. So that seems to be working pretty well. Let's cancel this print. Excellent. So now Octolapse has started rendering. It says it caught a couple frames, and that's actually going to take quite a while. Uh, it takes a long time to render ultra high res time lapses, but there's some settings you might want to change to fix that. So if you're running on, let's say, a Pi 3B, like I am, you may want to edit this rendering profile, scroll to the bottom, and under advanced rendering options, you can increase the thread count. I have mine set to 4 and it's because my Pi has four cores and I'm not going to print and render at the same time. I don't ever recommend that you print and render at the same time, but if you do, make sure that you have at least one or two free cores in order to do that. Um, but if you're going to wait for your rendering to complete before printing anything else, you may want to crank it up to the maximum. 
also, um, I shouldn't have closed the rendering profile out so so quick, but the default bitrate is pretty low for the rendering profiles in Octolapse. You may want to change this. You may want to increase it by quite a bit, maybe 15 megabits or 20 megabits. It all depends how big your image is. And if you look at your quality and it's a little bit blocky, you may want to increase this a bit. All right, now as soon as the, the time lapse is done rendering, this will go away and your time lapse should appear over here. All right, that's the basics. Now if you tune in later, I'm going to create another video that shows you how to capture time lapses with your DSLR that don't download to your Pi. That can actually cut your download time by quite a bit and speed up the, the snapshots. Um, you actually can also download those images at the very end right before rendering so even though they're not transferring to the Pi in real time you can still have Octolapse render your time lapse or you could leave them on the camera and render them manually there's no reason to, to you, you don't have to render through Octolapse anyway so thanks very much for watching we'll see you soon